This video focuses on turbulence and wind shear that may be encountered during a flight. We will start by looking at the weather conditions that create movement of the atmosphere. Turbulence is defined by meteorologists as random movement of the atmosphere. This causes accelerations to the aircraft and therefore movement that may be uncomfortable or even cause injuries, dependent on intensity. We recall four different levels of severity for turbulence. Light turbulence is the least severe, with slight erratic changes in altitude and or attitude. Moderate turbulence is similar to light turbulence, but of greater intensity, variations in speed as well as attitude and altitude may occur, but the aircraft remains in control at all time. Severe turbulence is characterized by large abrupt changes in attitude and altitude with large variations in airspeed. There may be brief periods where effective control of the aircraft is challenging. Loose objects might move around in the cabin. Extreme turbulence is capable of causing structural damage and may also result in the loss of control of the aircraft. Mathematically, we define wind shear as the wind vector difference between two points along a short trajectory. Let's take an example. If the wind strength and direction change with height, Above a point in the atmosphere, a vertical wind shear exists. For crews, wind shear can correspond to a rapid change of indicated airspeed of the aircraft. This is equally true for heavy aircraft as for smaller airliners or even light aircraft. Due to ground proximity, this weather phenomenon is more hazardous at low levels. The atmosphere moves horizontally as well as vertically and we know that the three principal causes of wind shear are turbulence linked to the dynamic atmosphere, for example, jets, fronts, and clear air turbulence. Turbulence linked to the topography, for instance, friction, mountain waves, islands, and turbulence linked to the local temperature profile, sea bees, breezes, catabatic winds, or low-level jets. Let's have a look on these three mechanisms in more details. Firstly, turbulence linked to the dynamic atmosphere. High and low pressures around the world create flows of air producing winds of different direction and intensity. These air movements cause jet streams, atmospheric disturbances and fronts, which are generators of wind shear and turbulence. At a more local level, let's now look at mechanisms that create turbulence linked to topography. The presence of relief and the nature of the surface can change the airflow. Islands will generate a vertical effect, but they will also cause a change in the wind direction and perhaps a venturi effect around the island with rotors downwind. For example, mountainous areas will create significant vertical disturbance in the airflow. At the scale of an aircraft, trees, buildings or other obstacles will generate local mechanical turbulence in the lower levels close to the ground. Moderate wind causes turbulence downwind of the airport structures, which can modify the wind direction at very low heights during approach. To continue, let's understand the turbulence linked to the local vertical temperature profile. The difference in nature between surfaces, such as sea and land, forest and bare ground, tarmac and grass, changes the absorption of the sun's energy at the surface. Some surfaces will absorb more energy, while others will reflect it. The energy loss at night is different depending on the nature of the surface. These local temperature differences can create variation of vertical air movement. So let's explore their contribution to a turbulent atmosphere. During the day, for example, the particles of air in contact with a warm surface become less dense and rise. The pressure reduces as the air rises and a convection flow is formed toward this local low pressure. This convection can generate vertical air movements that may be very strong 
and which could ultimately lead to the formation of a towering tumulus or a cumulonimbus. These types of clouds can induce severe turbulence, which can be felt up to 20 nautical miles around and 5,000 feet above the formation. They may create phenomena such as drone drafts, microbursts and gust fronts, which cause severe wind shear and turbulence, which can be particularly hazardous at lower altitudes. As pilots, we know that we should avoid cumulonimbus or towering cumulus laterally and upwind rather than downwind in order to minimise turbulence. In addition, we should remain vigilant at lower altitudes as a downburst can severely impact the aircraft trajectory and performance. A sudden change from headwind to tailwind can quickly reduce indicated airspeed and cause loss of altitude. To a lesser extent, convection or radiation mixed with the topography and nature of the surface can modify the wind shear and therefore turbulence at a local scale. Runways close to the coast may experience the sea breeze effect which can change the wind vector at low altitude. At night, the temperature radiation induces other effects such as catabatic winds or low-level jet streams. With very cold weather at temperate or more northern latitudes, on the steep slopes of significant relief, such as the Rockies, the Andes, the Himalayas, the cold air may descend, generating violent winds. These are called catabatic winds. Runways located in valleys in mountainous areas may be subject to catabatic winds, which can modify the wind vector suddenly, close to the ground, and can induce turbulences. A significant wind shear may occur at the top of a temperature inversion. Pay attention. Just after takeoff or on approach, the wind shear at the inversion might affect the performance of the aircraft. Larger scale wind shear can be understood when comparing a significant weather chart with the synoptic chart. Associated to the jet stream, moderate to severe clear air turbulence can be encountered close to the tropopause. Associated to a front, moderate or severe turbulence and wind shear might occur also. The presence of thunderstorms, towering cumulus or CBs in the weather charts is also an indication of turbulence, of course. Areas of severe turbulence are notified in the SIGMET messages. In the METAR and TAF, the indication of a towering cumulus or CB is a sign of possible severe turbulence or wind shear, as well as hail and icing. In addition, Wind shear observation at an airport should be indicated in the METAR. Turbulence and wind shear are due to airflow modifications coming from the dynamic atmosphere, the topography and the local temperature profile. These may change the aircraft's attitude, indicated airspeed and flight path suddenly.